Okay, I was going to ask you, um, okay, you know how they claimed that a truck driver came forward after Finley and Crosley were arrested. Mm -hmm. They put in the newspaper and mm -hmm. they told the news people that a truck driver had suddenly come forward and that he had said he probably hit him. Yes. But we found out that's not that's true. true. Right. The truck driver, uh, he did not, they, they went to and talked to him. And to me, what they done was just had him to say that he that he did this. That truck driver was not responsible for that. You had a uh, civil trial since had, they said that the truck driver did it. You sued the truck driver. Is that correct? Gary Waite sued the trucking company. Okay. On your behalf, on my, uh, Yes, on my behalf. Yes. But uh, the truck driver got up and testified, did he not? Yes, he did. And he said he didn't he do it. He said that he didn't do it. He also said that, uh, uh, what did he say about the morning uh, of the the death? He, the morning of the death, when he said he when he told when he got to that uh, to that truck stop, he said he got out and he walked around and he looked and he didn't. It was nothing. He said it was nothing on the truck. Well, what about the sheriff? Uh, did he mention the sheriff? The coming and looking at his truck. He said something about somebody came and looked at his truck, but I can't remember whether if it was uh, the um, what is it? Was it another state trooper or something? Yeah, um, I was at the civil trial, so I I know what they said, and they did. To me, it did sound like a conspiracy. Yes. Because the truck driver said that um, he didn't feel. He said he knows. That Brandon wasn't walking, right? Okay? And he knows that Brandon was a land there, right? But he, you know, he said that it was possible that a part of Brandon was, was there, and he might have hit. Was that? that. And would that be the leg or something he like could, that? He, he don't know. He oh, didn't know. Okay. But that's what uh, he said. But um, he said that he was contacted by a private detective here. Well, uh, Jim uh, Thompson. Mm -hmm. Is that his name? Yes. One of the private investigators that works for the county. The county. And they told him to go to this lawyer's office. Uh, and he said he was scared and he said he went down there. Right. And uh, they told him, uh, this is your lawyer. And they pretty much had him to manufacture. Sign, yeah. Manufacture. Say what they wanted him to say. Mm -hmm. he, he said he never asked for any immunity and all of that. He right. said he, he just said did. They well, just gave it to him. Yeah, he said he, he was. He, yeah. He said he never contacted a lawyer, tried to have a lawyer or anything. They just had that set up. Right. Okay. Now let me ask you something. Um, As far as, uh, what's the name? Shannon Finley? Is that is that the names? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, were they arrested here in Paris, or how 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 did they get brought to justice? If it's so called justice here now, in Paris, now family had left Paris and went to Kansas, and that's what the uh, Stacy the state trooper uh, McNeil uh, went up there to go get him to bring him back. Okay, and so when they brought him back, what charges were they held with? On there, they uh, had said for the death of uh, Brandon McClellan. Okay, okay. Now, how did that trial come out? What happened with that? Them boys ended up uh, not, they went now, they, they stayed in jail for a while. And uh, then they ended up, uh, both of them ended up getting out. Okay. Because they said it, well, they didn't have enough evidence. Okay. Now, let me ask you something about the truck. Was there uh, was there type any type of blood or hair up under whose truck was it? It was uh, Shannon Finley's truck. Now, was there any type of evidence up under the truck, like hair, blood, flesh, anything like that? There, as far as the truck, they said that they found little traces of blood spat on the truck. Okay, okay. But they said it was not enough evidence to convict them. Okay. Now, one of the things that I know is that when we came down like a week later, mm -hmm. pieces of Brandon's skull, remember uh, us walking? Pieces of his skull. It was money laid out there. Jewelry. Jewelry. Right. Yes. And, and these were the things that we picked up and we gave to the Texas Rangers. Uh, I remember even finding a piece of his skull with hair on it. Yeah. Uh, just basically scattered all over the freeway. So, 
Uh, and that was, you know, we're not detectives. You know, this is just us walking the trail, finding these things. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a trained Texas Ranger, a police officer, state trooper, they're supposed to be able to find these things. All of that. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't believe we found a piece of his brain out there because there was some, uh, some pieces of matter that we know that was part of a... Um, part of a person. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about the evidence and how it was obtained? This, the whole deal was not investigated the way it should have been. I mean, you know, even though it's a wide stretch out there on that road, they should have tried to rope off everything, tried to keep everything, uh, uh, go through there with a fine two comb, really, to find all the change and the stuff that we was finding out there. I, I mean, it should have been, it should have been investigated right, but it wasn't. Because we found blood splatters all the way up and down the, the highway. I mean, yes. I remember us going out there and finding blood, you know, just, just like he had been drugged, uh, for whoever had, you know, continues to be run over, it was just like blood, you know, just blood, like, every, all up and down that freeway. But the way that we found money from one side of the road right, to I the other, that. Right. that lets me know my son was running for his life. Right. They had to be after him in that truck, right. and he was running. Because, I mean, in order for us to find money from one side of the road to the other, it, that, that's what it was. Right. And then the way we saw the way that it was money was found over the fence. Yes. It was money found over the fence. His jewelry was found over the fence. And you could see tire tracks and things like <coughs> yes. that going up to the fence and then coming back from the fence. Yes. And these were the things that we actually saw. Yes. So, apparently, you know, so it's a fact that... The parents' uh, criminal justice system didn't do it's justice not, to Brandon. No, it didn't do justice to let these boys go out. And so, what what would you hope now that uh, we now understand that it's an open murder case? Mm -hmm. Well, according to Stacy McNeil, who's the lead investigator, he's a Texas Ranger, mm -hmm. he said in open. Murder. He said it was a still an open murder investigation. Mm -hmm. When asked if he if he thought the trucker did it, he said he thinks the ones who were arrested was killed him. And so, if the lead investigator says it was a murder, mm -hmm. right? Then why why, why did they do that? Why did why they did let they everybody go? Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right, right. He shouldn't have never been released from the first time that he ended up killing that boy, Moy Sneed, over there in that park over there. He got off with that, and then he got off with this from doing this to Brandon. Now, let me ask you something. And who, that's not right. Now, who did what? Now, who, what What happened with Mark Sneed? Shannon Finley and Mark Sneed was over there at, uh, at the park. Uh, was it Coverson Park? No, I forget the name of the park, but um, they were there at some point during the night, and... Uh, Shannon Finley shot Mark Sneed three times in the head at two different angles, yes. side of the head and the back of the head. Mm -hmm. But he said it was an accident, so then, and they gave him four years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that was supposed to be, you know His how friend. they run around this as a good friend? Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be a good friend. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they gave him four, four years, years of shooting this man, yes. four head, years. head. <laughs> yes. Wow. Four years. Yes. Wow. And so Mark Sneed was a black man? No, he was white. No, he oh, so was white. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he just so he just killed his friend like that and got four years. Yes. and just went on and took that like that. Yes. So let me ask you something. What would you like to see come out of this um, this this sad story? Justice served right. And what type of justice? And to the do? right person to get to uh, pay for the crime that, from killing my son. Would that be instead of them covering this up? Would that be uh, and the right thing to do? Prison or death or what would you like for that to see from your heart? What would you really like for it to be seen? As far as death penalty, no. Okay. But for them to get a life sentence in prison for okay. what they done to my child, okay. That's I mean you know hey, he didn't deserve that. But let me ask you something. What type of young man was Brandon? Can you tell me a little bit about him? Oh <laughs> yes. My son, he he was, I mean, he was a, a sweet kid. I mean, he would help anybody. He he'd be friends with anybody, you know. I mean, he he was just, I mean, he was just a loving child. He was a sweet boy, like football. Yes, he played football. He played basketball. He he loved being around his nieces and nephews. Uh, he would help when my when my before my mom died. 
uh, when she was still living, uh, he would help her. He would help me. He helped me when I get sick. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you something. What has your health been like since he's passed away? Going downhill. Going downhill. But you're not going to leave this place till you see justice, are you? Right. Okay. I'm holding on until I do get justice. You're holding baby. on to me. I'm trying my best. When this first happened, you were up walking. You were at the the, the rallies and I was up you, yeah. moving around. I but didn't now you like I, I felt like I had life. Mm -hmm. When they took my son, when when this happened to my baby, it was like it, it was like I mean it, it was like I just left a big hole in me. Really. Right, right. They say when they, um I have a friend named Colette Flanagan, and her son name was Clinton Allen, and he was shot seven times by Dallas uh, PD. Mm -hmm. And she has a um, she has an organization called Mothers Against uh, Police Brutality, mm -hmm. and she speaks because Clinton was her only son, right. and she says that when a mother loses their child, their DNA changes. Yeah, their DNA changes, and she says something inside that changes you. It's it's something genetically is altered yeah. and I think that is what has happened as far as you being sick and I think the only thing that really keeps Miss Collette going is fighting ju fighting for um, justice for Clinton and not only does she fight for Clinton she fights for Trayvon she fights for George she fights for Brandon she fights for all the mothers who have lost their sons right. and you know it's nothing that we can really say to make it any better but to let you know that you are loved and that you're never too far away from our thoughts and that there are women out there that are fighting for justice. Mm -hmm. um, Sabrina, uh, Sabrina um, Trayvon's mother, Jordan, Day Jordan Davis's mother, Tamar Rice's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Oscar Grant. And there's a strong, what you can't do here, there are women out there right now that are fighting for you. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to know that um, Brandon is forgotten. I think about him all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, that impacted my life that impacted us deeply and I just want to say that my prayers are with you and justice will be given if not in this life it'll be given in the, in the next life and I mean as far as you know as far as justice as far as the two guys that did that there's something waiting for them Yeah. so I just want to let you know that um, I thank you for letting me interview you and talk to you and um, you know that you're loved thank you All right. this is Olinka Green with Soul Metro Radio uh, interviewing Miss Jackie McClellan. McClellan.